Hey everyone, so I just taken my flat screen TV off of this cabinet here because we want to take the TV and mount it above the cabinet here on this wall in between these two decorative fixtures that my wife found and really likes. I don't know anything about wall mounts. Um, we just went and looked through them at Walmart. And so I found the yeah, Sanus Viewpoint Extend Tilt TV wall mount. 32 through 70. I'll show you the model number. The model's right there. And so we're going to put that up there. The other thing is I want, want it to look nice and clean. I don't want to um, have the cable showing. I got a uh, cable concealer recessed power kit. What I in initially went to buy was um, some copper cabling so that I can extend a power and put a power outlet right here on the wall. I was in Lowe's and I happened to walk down their electronics aisle. I don't know if it's electronic aisle, but it's in their electrical department and saw this. And this, I was like, oh, that's pretty genius. And that you plug in right behind, you mount this right behind the TV. Then it brings it to a male outlet that will be behind the cabinet as the picture shows here. So it's right here behind the cabinet. So all the cabling will go through the wall, you know, between these two points. So behind the TV, and then behind the cabinet and then you're able to tie this male outlet to its current the current power source but i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna start out with the mount and the reason why i'm starting out with the mount because that'll tell me where i need to put the concealing kit so it looks like they got a pretty straightforward set-by-set -set procedure here they do have what looks to be something more thorough the way it looks is i'm going to be attaching these brackets here to the back of the tv first attaching the wall mount and then attaching the TV to the wall mount. As you can see, this right here serves as a guide, as a template, so you can put this on the wall and figure out where you're gonna put your holes at. So here's the back of my TV, and I found the wall mount screw holes right here, and then down there. The kit comes with a um, good assortment of all the different screws that you would need based on your TV. For the bracket here, how you know which one goes on which side is the handle here. So this is the handle that controls, allows you to tighten, tighten and loosen the, the tilting mechanism. So obviously that needs to be out so you can get to it. So this one obviously goes on the left side of the back of the TV. And this one here, see the, the handle goes on the right side. Okay, so there we have it. The brackets are on. Measure your TV, determine the center point, and, that, and then, you know, establish that bottom line. We ended up going 14 inches above the cabinet here. And the reason for that, I think, was orig originally 8 inches. That's the original line down here. The 14 inches is going to give us more space to put picture frames along the bottom here. And then I can measure off of that for placement of the wall mount. So next up, I'm going to find the studs within the wall. The studs are those two by fours that are drywalls mounted to. I'm going to anchor the wall mount to those studs because with, with the weight of the TV, you don't want to just put that in a hollow wall. So I'm going to get my stud finder uh, and find where those studs are at. So I found my studs. See that line? It beeped right there. Before I put the wall plate onto the wall, I need to figure out where I need to put it at so that the TV is positioned where I need it to be positioned. So what I did is I just went ahead and put the wall plate. I mounted it. Then the, the brackets here. And so how you do that is just like that. And there it is. So what I do now is just figure out the distance between the center of the hole here to the bottom of the TV. <coughs> so as you can see, it's eight and three eighths inches. So now I know how to figure out where that this hole belongs. Okay, so there's the line that marks the bottom of the TV. I have um, eight and three eighths measured out. So right there on the stud, I'm gonna mark uh, eight and three eighths. Okay, so now I know where to put the template. Okay, so I was able to get this um, template on based on the marking here. So I put it on here, just use the level. You can see, I just kind of lined it up. So I got my template level, and by, when I got it level, I put the painter's tape on it to hold it in place, and then I was able to mark 
um, my holes. Now, this thing is not exactly centered now, but the thing is, is the, the brackets slide along the plate. So it may be that the TV sits more over here and, and not on center. And that's because we needed these to be on the studs here. If I were to move the template um, and try to center this up on the center point, these holes actually would be too far over. I can go ahead and get the lag screws in there. And if for some reason you want to move your plate over, you can do that. You can just slide it over by loosening the lag screws and just move it over and then tightening back down. Um, but this should work just fine because like I said, the, the brackets slide along the plate. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my drill set up and uh, get some holes in this so I can get the lag screws in. Okay, so the drill bit that I have is a uh, seven over 32. Looks like it'll fit right on there. I wanted to see where that middle brace was. So if, when you're talking about studs, you know, behind your drywall, you have a brace that's typically halfway down between the studs. It's a two by four just as well as these the studs that are up and down. You just want to know where those are because you may end up having to cut through those in order to, you know, if you have a top receptacle in your cable concealment kit, you're also, you know, you're going to obviously have to send cables into the wall and then through that that middle brace. So I checked, uh, used the, the stud finder and I was able to find, you can probably see the mark right there. Yeah, right in there, I got a mark right there, you can see it. So so I'm gonna have to deal with that. Another thing that I just thought about is, and I just looked, so on that cable concealment kit, the top receptacle is eight inches tall. So now that I got this all marked out, I know where the plate's going to be at, so I wanted to look, okay, so if the top receptacle is 8 inches tall, then the bottom of the TV, I marked it, so it's right here, so, so I took my tape measure, so there's not enough space between the bottom of the TV and the wall plate, so I can't put the receptacle right here. If I was to put it right here, I would have to put it, you know, below the mounting plate and the receptacle would poke out underneath the TV. Well, the point is to conceal it all. I don't want to see the cables. I don't want to see the top receptacle. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably go to the side of the mounting plate and put the receptacle over here and not have to worry about having enough space for both the mounting plate and the top receptacle. So just something to think about, um, just a little bit of planning ahead. Okay, so in the instruction, just want to, I've uh, been saying lag screw. It's also lag bowl, that's the way, the way it's listed in instruction. But this is what I'm going to use to, to mount my plates. Uh, it also does come with a washer for each one. And so this has got a half inch head on it. So I put a half inch socket bit onto my drill. And I'm going to go ahead and put these on. Before I put the other one in, I'm going to just make sure it's level. Move it up a little bit here. So I'm going to move on to the cable concealment kit because it obviously will be in the way if I go ahead and put the TV up. So again, I'm going to put the top receptacle for the cable concealment kit over here. And so I need to find that, that brace between the studs over here. Okay, that's where it's at. So obviously I'm going to be having to cut through that, but that, that's fine. So I have the next stud over identified, and then I have that, that middle brace identified as well. And so what I'm going to do is I, I got the top receptacle I just pulled out of the box is I'm going to place it in there and kind of see uh, where it could fit best and trace that out. Okay, so I realized that after you put the receptacle up, it's, you don't want to trace the outside of it. What you want to do is use the, the template because uh, you want to make sure you want to cut a hole big enough for what's actually going to be inserted into the wall. So this template right here is meant for that. What I am going to do, I want 
to go, I want to cut in where that stud is. And the reason for that is because if I have access to it, I can cut into it and make sure it's out of the way so that it's easy to drop cables right through it. So I got my template traced out and I'm going to go ahead and get my oscillating saw out and cut uh, into that. And then, you know, we pull that out and see what we're working with, see what we have to do as far as removing wood that will be obstructing us here. Okay, so I know why my stud finder was having so much issues. I have a second layer of drywall. So I'll cut again, see if I can get through that and see what we're working with. Okay, so it looks like the stud finder was spot on. So there's that brace right there. So I'm gonna change the bit on my oscillating saw to a wood cutting bit. Uh, and I'm gonna cut a good way into that. And the reason for that is because when you push a cable through, if it hits the wood, it might wanna go that way. I think it should be good enough so that the tech cables are clear to go straight on down. And I'll just go ahead and use the camera to see what else is down there. Oh look, so we got a nice clear path so any cable that'll drop is just going to go straight on down. Just getting the top receptacle ready to go, ready to insert, started stretching out this cable here. But I realized that if it's back in the wall and I'm cutting with the oscillating saw, I potentially could cut the wire. So I'm going to go ahead and get the bottom receptacle ready to go before I insert this in. Okay, so here's the items for the bottom receptacle, and it's all the same dimensions for any other standard uh, electrical outlet like that one right there. So, so what I'm essentially gonna do is just put in the, that bottom receptacle just below the top receptacle, and then I'm also gonna make it at the same height as this, as this plug over here. Okay, so I use my level to make sure that I'm directly underneath the top receptacle and went ahead and marked uh, the proper measurement. This gray portion of the receptacle, this is what is actually inserted into the wall. And so I will use this as a template for cutting that bottom hole. So I got this leveled off here and I'm gonna go ahead and mark around it, figure out where I need to cut at. Okay, so I'm gonna just go ahead and mark those off and cut that with my oscillating saw. Okay, let's pop this on open here. You see that little, I guess we can call it a, a brace, but uh, what it's going to do is as you tighten down the screw, it's going to lock that in place. Okay, so I went ahead and dropped the wire from the top receptacle into the hole. And you can see it down there. Okay, before I insert this top receptacle, I made sure that these uh, metal braces here uh, were far enough back on the screw so that they're positioned to catch the dry, back of the drywall and tighten this down just like the bottom. So I'm gonna just go and pull this wire through the bottom receptacle. Okay, to get this set up, I'm just gonna insert this here. Okay, and then and that locks it in place. Okay, so for all the other cables, you see how this opening here has a, a curve to it. Well, they'll hit that and they'll come out that way. It has something to kind of close it in if you're not running anything through it. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this cable line through here. Oh, there we have it, okay. So, pretty easy. 
Okay, we'll right, just run this through here. So I'm actually going to end up just taking out the rest of that wood. And the reason for that, so I ran the first cable in. It was coax cable. and just fine. Cat5 ran into some issues trying to get it through. And then also HDMI, I'm just having problems. It's hitting that wood, just kind of the angle it's coming out in. It's not load bearing or anything like that. I think um, it's not going to hurt anything to take that out. So don't recommend it for you, but um, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, it's gone now. I'm going to go ahead and stick this back in here and try again. Okay, so that did the trick. Now, there's no obstruction now. These cables go right in. So that actually wasted me a lot of time sitting there trying to fight these. Okay, so got the top receptacle in place with the wires that I need run through it. Uh, it is kind of tricky. Once you get more wires running down uh, to the bottom receptacle, it's kind of tricky to get them to show up at the opening just because they're kind of, they hit each other and stuff like that. So just kind of got to uh, work with it. But if you notice, I've got the wires run over here to where the left side of the TV will be. And the reason for that is that's where they connect. Now, the reason why I didn't put the, the top receptacle on the left side of the TV is because um, my foyer is on that side. So you will see that coming into my house. So that's why I opted to put this um, over on this side. So everything uh, has been impressive with the, these products so far. I would think maybe they should have a larger opening, maybe do a double you know, outlet size hole. And just because it's a little tricky to get the, the cables that you need through here, especially when you have the big adapters that you have to push through it. Okay, so I went ahead and put the outlet cover on these wires because I can't, you know, put that on if I go on connecting the cable. So just got that in place, ready to go. And I'm going to go ahead and just slip this in here. Get these wires up in there. This thing wants to keep coming apart. Line this up just like that. Okay, the bottom receptacle is ready to go. So the concealment kit also includes a power cable to plug into the lower receptacle and we can run this to a power strip so that way the adapter up top will uh, have live power on it. It comes with a plastic cover here, so I just gotta take that off of this male plug here and then I'll plug that in. Everything is now connected and I'm gonna go ahead and get that TV on. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and set, set this, get that top part hooked in and it pivots down. So as you can see, I got it on there. Um, I'll need to adjust it obviously, but I'm gonna get the wiring squared away and uh, just really straightforward and setting it on there. And I can slide it back and forth and then secure it uh, to make sure that it's on the center point. And, and um, so I'll do that. So in getting the, it tilted the cor correctly, I want to just um, parallel with the wall. I'm just loosening these knobs here. And now that it's loose, you can just kind of pivot it wherever you want it. So that's the closest to the wall it'll go. And the best way to push it back is to put your hands on both sides of the TV, just doing one side was kind of wonky. So use um, both hands, both sides of the TV. And that's what it looks like. I'm having problems keeping it level when I move it. So what I decided to do is just go ahead and cable it all up. So that's pretty straightforward. Um, just went ahead and threw the cables in, coax, HDMI, uh, network uh, cable, and then I plugged it in. The cool thing is I didn't have to like zip tie any excess coax, HDMI or Cat5 cable up. I didn't have, you know, cause all you gotta do is you just slide it into the wall. And so that, that gets, gets rid of all the excess cabling. And now that I got it cabled up, I'm gonna push it back to the wall and uh, see about getting it leveled and secured. Okay, so I'm gonna get these screws in place. There's two of these. Wands for each bracket. 
So the TV is noticeably unlevel, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here to this bracket where it mounts the TV. I'm going to loosen both of the screws and see if I can't just get to adjust some to get this right side to go down some. Okay, yeah, well, it dropped when I did that, so. So I'll tighten it up and see what happens. Okay, so that did the trick, adjusting those two screws. Okay, so I finally got this thing centered and level, and after all the trouble, I probably will not move this thing ever again, unless I have to add another cable in the back. One little tip, if you want to move this to the right or to the left, don't push it or, you know, try to do it that way. Loosen the screws. I'll show you the screws real quick. Loosen the screws right. Loosen the screws right here on your on your braces. And then take a metal rod. So I got this metal rod here. I use this to extend my screwdriver or my, my drill out. And you can put bits on the end of it. But take um, take something like this. And a hammer, and just simply, with, with, now that the, that screw is loose, now that the screw is loose, you just um, put this at the side of the brace, and then tap on it with a hammer to slide it over. Hit that the, the first one and the second one, just kind of shift them over a little bit at a time, and and that way, anytime you like, if you're trying to do it by hand and move it over, you're just going to adjust the TV. You're going to mess up its leveling. So just, yeah, use something like this with the hammer and just tap it over that way. That's the best way to do it without messing everything up. Okay, so the Santa's TV wall mount turned out to be a pretty good product. Everything looks good. I, I would say the only thing is, is that it's kind of difficult to level. That was the only challenging part. But other than that, pretty easy install. Good product as far as hanging the TV. So the Santa's cable concealment kit, also a good product. Easy install. The only thing there is just the, the receptacle, the lower receptacle for receiving your HDMI, your Cat5, um, coax type cables. It doesn't have a ton of space, so but it's, it's enough to, for, for me. I had three uh, cables running through it. If you have a bunch of cables running that you'll need to run from your TV down to your cabinet, then that, that might be a challenge right there. But other than that, a pretty good product. Hopefully this helps you with your install. And thanks for watching and uh, God bless.